Hi everybody, welcome to Wool and Wine episode 38. I'm Tammy. I'm Claudia. I'm Janet. And welcome back to our existing viewers. And for our new viewers, we are a knitting podcast. We're three friends that have been knitting f together for about five years, I think, right? Yeah. So we're happy to have you. So happy. So happy to be back. It's been a while since we last podcast. Yeah, it has. And we're recording here in just south west. East. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? We're Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> area. <laughs> In the Bellbrook area. Yeah. <laughs> Southwest. Southwest. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. It's south. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> south of Dayton. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, so, man. before we get oh, started, yeah. that was a little confusing. That was. We know where we live, don't worry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, cheers to all of you. Cheers. cheers. We're so appreciative to have you here. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. That's delicious. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. We'll be talking more about that at the very, very end if you're not interested in hearing our wine talk. <laughs> but yes. um, it has been a hot minute, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really has. Yes, Almost it a month. It's, there have been some more vacations and things. And Sorry, it's been I'm wonderful. Looking, so we have, we're going to do like the regular format. So we've got some finishes and some works in progress. And, and, and we're wearing some things. Dream knitting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All the things. Yeah. Well, first of all, we want to talk about what we're wearing. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to go first? Sure. I'm going to, I have the uh, Wyeth by Alicia Plummer. And um, I did a size 48, and the yarn I used is the Fibra Natura in Lima Tweed, and the color weighs Deep Sea, and you'll see the video. But I thought I had a skein that I brought that um, of the, the yarn, but anyway, I don't. But it has all these pretty designs on the front. And I'll tell you what, this is my favorite yarn ever, but they don't make it anymore. <laughs> oh. oh, shoot. Yeah, because I bought it at a, at, uh, what was it? Like a TJ Maxx or someplace, like a... Oh, it was well, home. Tuesday, you got it Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. Tuesday That's morning. where I got yeah. it. And no, they're no longer in business, but that was right after I started knitting. And I was over there and I saw this yarn and I'm like, oh my God, that's gorgeous. So this I bought. This is Fiber Natura? Yes. I have some skeins of this upstairs but that I haven't knit with yet. It's the Lima Tweed. Okay, I'll have to look and see but what mine is. I just, I just uh, reblocked it or washed it. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I've never, never shaved it. Mm -hmm. And I wear it a lot around the house. Mm -hmm. And look, look, there's almost no pilling. Right. Yeah, that's really great. So it's like, yeah, really pretty colors. It's yeah, yeah. that's such a great sweater. It mm -hmm. is a great sweater. I like the design. It's a not a hard sweater to knit at all. No, all those arrows are really cool. They, yeah, they add a lot of interest. Yeah, to they do. What would be a basic just drop shoulder? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think this was one of my early early knits. Yeah, so her original pattern was done in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is a woolen spun worsted weight yarn. And I... This you, is worsted. Yeah, is that worsted? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you could probably also get gauge with a, um, a nice plump DK. I bet you could, yeah. Because that shelter is so... It's lofty, but it also can compress down. And I can't remember what... I, did you make that one too? I think we yes. all did, didn't we? I yeah, did. I did. Yeah, I don't remember what the gauge was. 
I can look it up. If... I don't know, but I did. I knit it with um, fingering weight held with mohair, I think. No, or... you, you used that red. The first one you did was with that dark. Yeah, that was red. And then I did the gold colored one that I call it the Wyeth ish that yeah, I did, you did yeah. more different textures on it. I'll wear that sometime. Yeah, or that's so beautiful. Pop a picture in or something. I don't know. I'll probably just wear it next time if it's not too hot. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. So we didn't give you the date. It's March 26th and it should be springtime. But um, things are greening up outside, but it's cold out there. <laughs> yeah. Spring comes and goes here in Dayton. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, just, if you don't like the weather, wait 10 seconds. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I looked at the weather report today. Um, so last night was the lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. oh, shoot. It was, was that last night or the night before? I think it, it was, was the full moon last night. Did you the see the night it? before was uh, it was really full, but I don't know if it was. Full. I think last night, the twenty fifth, was mm -hmm. the lunar eclipse, I and we so. went out in the driveway last night looking to see if we could see it, and it was so cloudy you couldn't see anything. But the moon had only been up an hour and a half mm -hmm. when we went out, and I think it probably had not come over the houses on the hill above us yet. And so I happened to wake up at like 2.45 a.m. <laughs> and looked out the bedroom window because usually that time of night I can see out this way mm -hmm. and see the moon and I couldn't see it at all. It was just so, so cloudy. And if it was eclipsed and cloudy, that would be a good reason to not be able to see it. But yeah, I yeah. saw it earlier in the evening and it was... Gorgeous. Yeah. It was like almost an orange yellow. Oh, yep. maybe, beautiful. Maybe, and then it did maybe. get covered up. Yeah, see, you yes. guys have so. that feel. It's almost like a prairie behind you mm -hmm. where there's nothing tall. So when the moon comes up, you can see it a lot sooner yes. than we can. Yes. Because we've got that big hill across the street, and it takes a while for it to come high enough in the sky over all those really old trees. So anyway, um, that was like a weather and a lunar report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. but do you remember if you made any modifications? I did story? not. I did not do any modifications, but I am thinking about doing another one. And, and I thought I could maybe figure out some kind of color work I could make on the bottom. Oh yeah, you could just, do anything. Uh, yeah, with it, so it just take the pattern. It's a good fit. And the round And I like this. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. almost like a U shape. It is. Yeah. I really like the neck. The but yeah, the shaping for that. She really she did a great job. Yeah, she Way did. to go, Alicia, Yay. if you're watching. <laughs> Probably aren't, but <laughs> if you are, we're happy to have you. <laughs> I'll tag her on Instagram when I there put you this go. up so she'll know and <laughs> there so you go. what are you wearing? I feel like that's brand new. It is brand new. This is a finish as well as something I'm wearing and this is the Chloe sweater by Knitting for Breakfast. It's very pretty. Yeah. And take a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And it has this beautiful cable detail. Uh -huh. And the yarn that I used for this is the Cloudborn DK and it's the brushed alpaca and wool DK and they don't make this anymore Cloudborn fibers is no more however I'm sure there's other companies that make something very similar to this didn't you say the fluff from what was it from nitpicks don't they do a fluffy they do it's a I think it's a um, bulky weight oh okay but and this is a DK but I think there's other DK that you can get brushed alpaca and wool or just brushed alpaca oh, or so surrey many alpaca or something and a DK yeah. weight that it will be real similar to this but the color in this is poppy heather and it's just a beautiful pink color mm-hmm so the content is, is, did you read the... Yeah, it's like 34% alpaca, 30... 47%. Oh, 47% alpaca, 47% wool, and then 7% polymide. And I tell you what, I didn't use 
but I think 700 yards of this. Wow. So it was just very, I mean, it wasn't, I had plenty of yarn left over. Um, I made the extra small size and um, in order to get, I wanted to get the small size, I was off gauge by like one stitch less than what it should have been. So I did the extra small to be small because I wanted it around 40, 41 inches. And sure enough, it worked out beautifully. And that's what I got with my extra small size. Perfect. And here's the video. And did, did, is that a, um, what was the gauge on that? It was a The large gauge, gauge, I think, right? was a 16. I was going to say that looks like 15 or 16. 15 or 16, or 16 yeah. Because they look about the same, and this is definitely 16. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I used a US 10 needle on this. Yeah. So, I mean, to tell you, it was just, I, I loved it. As soon as this, I saw this pattern come out and the yarn was similar to something I had in the stash. I rushed. I don't know. Did She's on it. <laughs> and her, the gauge, I mean, they asked for like eight to ten inches of ease for this, but I did not mm, want yeah. it that, that much ease yeah. for myself. So um, that's why I went smaller and then kind of doing the math a little bit and worked out really well. So I'm very happy with it. Yeah, it's really pretty. Huh. So now what are you wearing? I am wearing, what am I wearing? This is the Burmy Basic. I moved some stuff around on my cheat sheet here. <laughs> um, this is the Burmy Basic by Beth McDonald Stone. So this is the 16. And I have a hodgepodge of yarns here, and it's kind of funny because I also have a little bit of Cloudborn in mine, and that was so <laughs> unintentional for all three of us to be showing something that is knit with a discontinued yarn. I know. So. Well, it's in our stash. So. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I have to, t so this was a test knit for Beth, and I'll, she's a joy. That, that woman is a delight. Um, I knit the size 40, and the yarns that I use, so what looks like black, which is really a very, very dark gray, is called Blackbird, and this is Diamond Lane, um, Big Birdie. And then the white color in the skinny little stripes is cloud born brushed alpaca sport and i held that double to get the same gauge that same really thick lofty um like birdie and then the gray color is lang yarns malu m-a-l-o-u and that's a medium gray color and this thing again it talking about big needles yeah and getting it done quickly yeah. holy moly it's it, great i love the sweater so i have more yarn to make another one because like you said it takes very little yarn mm -hmm. to do something at a 16 gauge mm -hmm. um, before i move on though i wanted to say beth is actually doing this sweater as a very basic sweater so it is a round yoke with you know in appropriate increases for the sizes and she's starting i think with the 18 stitch gauge and going all the way up to maybe either 26 or 28 and she's releasing them a couple together at a time so the four i'm sorry the 16 that I did is going out I think with the 20 I'm not sure I, I shouldn't even give numbers because yeah. I'm not entirely sure is that right the 20s I, I saw that the 20 came out okay. and I think the 16 is out also I, it's an but amazing, I'm not sure yeah she said she's gonna do something with the pricing once she gets them all out so that you are not having to pay full price for each pattern set of two that she publishes 
But the idea is if you've got yarn and you knit a gauge swatch and you want to make a sweater, if you like your gauge swatch, all you do is measure it and pick the pattern for this and be able to do your own thing. So the original pattern is just plain. So I did the stripes and somebody else, oh, I was watching Mega from Skeins of Dreams this morning and she did a striped one as well, but hers was, mm -hmm. I think, a different gauge. She's testing a different gauge and her stripes are only maybe an inch and a half wide. Mm -hmm. And she used like four or five colors and that was gorgeous too. So check out the pattern pages mm -hmm. um, because it's really a neat sweater. Mm -hmm. So anyway, do you have a finish? I do not. Okay. So I think I'm just going to sit here and drink wine <laughs> <laughs> while you guys talk. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. So I have some finishes. The first one I have is the Little Bear Hug Beanie. And this is by Kim Lichtenegger. And I may have botched the name up, but it's on the screen. And here is what that cute little hat looks like. Oh, it's got my those gosh. cute little that ears. Is adorable. And uh, little ears. I love yeah. the ears. <laughs> so this is a size one to two years for a little youngin. Yep. And the yarn I used was the Malabrigo yarn Arroyo in colorweight coffee toffee. That's pretty. So, I thought that was so cute. That is adorable. Huh, so I hopefully love it. it'll look cute on him when his head gets a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If his so, mommy keeps hats on him so he's used to them, he'll wear them when he's uh -huh. bigger. Because, you know, little baby girls with headbands, it's the same kind of thing. You put headbands on them when they're really young and they don't uh, keep yanking them off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell her <laughs> yeah because she's gonna want him to wear that for sure right <laughs> <laughs> that is adorable yes. oh my okay so I, I guess I've got one I'll go and then you can do the next two okay. um, so my next finish is the Monday sweater by Petite Knit And I did this, I did the size two, which is 43 and a quarter. I didn't get gauge. It's a tiny bit smaller than gauge. Um, it's probably more like a 40. And I did that on purpose because Janet knit one just recently and we used the same mohair. So I'll hold it up close. I didn't bring the balls of mohair, but you can see the beautiful color. The background color is just um, diamond. So it is, again, a unavailable yarn, I believe. It's the Uru yarn, Sugared Sport, in the colorway diamond. So it's just a, almost like a sand color with um, Stellina, with silver Stellina in it. But the mohair is, that's the star of the show. And that's the Sheepy Shire Dandelion Mohair in the colorway Soul Sister. So Janet had two skeins of this and I had two skeins because Claudia bought it for us for Christmas. And Janet knit her sweater and ran out of the mohair and needed to use like a tenth of a skein to finish yeah. it up. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. And when she called to buy that next skein, they didn't have my colorway anymore. Ooh. So they, or they were out of it or whatever. So <clears throat> I made sure that I didn't need it. So I knit the sleeves a little bit shorter. I stopped a little bit sooner. So the depth of the raglan, you know, once you get started on some of these raglans, as long as you keep trying them on, like I always do, mm -hmm. You just stop when it gets to the right spot in your armpit. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to keep going as many rows as the designer says. Mm -hmm. um, 
So anyway, that's what I did. I just made sure that it was my correct depth and that it was big enough to go all the way around by putting it on a barber cord and trying it on, I think like three times while I was doing the yoke, just, you know, cause you get anxious and you're like, oh, I gotta be almost I know, there. I know, and you I gotta try see it on it and it's like, nope, I've got an inch. And then you do it at an inch and it's like, nope, I've got another half an inch. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I try things on like that repeatedly and that I ended up finishing with all of it and not running out. So I still have a smidgen left Perfect. to do oh, something. something. I'm yeah. sure you'll find something. I will. Good. That color is just gorgeous. Uh-huh. I love the little blips of oh. blue in there. All that, like yeah, that, that navy. It almost looks purple yeah. until you get right up on it. And it's like a navy and cranberry and pink. Oh, yeah, mm. so pretty. all the good colors. I tell you, that's a good practice, though, because I... I always think oh, I got to follow the pattern exactly. Get you know, have right. to have this amount of stitches around the sleeves, and you know, and you really you don't. don't. No. Mm -hmm. So no. That's what you good. do have to know if you're going to do a two by two rib or a one by one rib. So a two by two, however many stitches you end up with plus whatever you put under the arms. You know that backward loop cast on mm -hmm. has to be divisible by four or your ribbing you'll need to add a stitch or two or take away a stitch or two when you get to the ribbing so you know you just have to know that but two or one by one it just has to be divisible easy. by two yes. that's real easy it's the two by two that you really want to pay yeah. better closer attention to because sometimes it can make it look bulky mm -hmm. or pull in if you have to you know take mm -hmm. three stitches away to make it make the count right or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah, but it is, you're right. It's a really good practice. Yes. We swear by those barber cords. Yes, mm -hmm. we <laughs> yeah, do. Because I'm always, I'm always trying stuff on. Oh my gosh, yeah, you have to, to get it right. I know. Well, not only that, like you said, I get excited about seeing how it's coming along and how it's fitting. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's really motivating too, mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, I love this. I have to get this done because it looks so good. Right, yes. yeah, right. So, and those barber cords are so easy to use. They are. Secure them onto the end of your needle and loosen up your stitches and... Yep. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. It's just... Oh. It's golden. Okay. It is. It's really nice. It is. It's great. Right. So um, you have two more finishes, I right? I do. This is a big finish. Yay. Episode for me. It is. So the next one I have is the Robinia Sweater by Anne Vensel. And I am so excited to have this one done. I love that. Oh, so the colors are oh, beautiful. Yeah, look yeah. how good that looks up and against her. Yes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and I have a video. So um, I've used a couple of yarns held together. The first one is the Wool of the Andes. Actually, I have the labels here to show you. Wool of the Andes, worsted weight, in the colorway, cranberry. And I held that with the Drops Kids Silk. And the colorway of that was raspberry. And then I used the Sayer Eco Soft in the colorway Natural. And oh, it it's just gorgeous. became this beautiful sweater. It is beautiful. So I did just a couple of small modifications. I made the armhole just a little smaller than what it was just this big long armhole. Yeah. So I Took it in about an inch or so on each side. So you mattress stitched it? Yeah, mattress stitched it. And I don't know. I think it it just, it makes the armhole a little smaller. It's yeah. plenty big. Now, did you pick up um, fewer stitches than she called for? No, I still picked up 80 stitches is what she called for, for my size. And I still picked up the same amount. Now, I could have picked up less. Mm-hmm. But it's 
really it's good. still yeah worked out really nice yeah. um the other thing was um i did take the t around the neck here the neckline i did do a little mattress stitch on both sides here like an inch on each side because it was a little bit wide around the neck so those couple of modifications that's just beautiful. so beautiful. And yeah. other than that, I just, What's that the, was it. You say your so color. It is just natural. It's natural. It's natural. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just so happy to get it done. I'm like, I am getting this done. <laughs> <laughs> you She's might been get talking mad. about that for a while. I gotta get this thing done. And I gotta yeah. get this done. Like the sleeves really kind of take pretty long <laughs> because. Mm -hmm. They're big, yeah. Ooh, there's a lot. They're big there. sleeves, um, but it's it really cute. It's a really nice and warm. Just a mm -hmm. really nice sweater. It's beautiful. So, Those love colors it. are the just colors so are good. Great. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Yeah, and I saw that Anne's coming out with a new sweater that's kind of it's similar to the Rubinia, where it has it has like a section similar to this only it's a very it's a wide section mm -hmm. huh. one big wide section and then the rest is just plain huh. and then she's got also another wide section in the arm on the sleeve and um hmm. but it's really cute it's beautiful so anxious to see that come out yeah no kidding so you yeah. can go ahead with your next one okay. too so it looks like you have one more i do i snuck one in i <laughs> didn't did. talk about it. so the next one is the anchor summer shirt by petite knit and here it is it's very nice this is a beautiful sweater that uh, I mean a lot of people have made this by now well, it looks a little a little wrinkly from folding it and so on and so forth but that'll come out so the color I used so is Syrah cool. it is. I like and it. this is the Cascade Ultra Pima cotton and like I said the color is Syrah which is another uh, wine. Our <laughs> wine theme. A <laughs> grape, at least. <laughs> and here's the video of me wearing it. I have made this for my sister. So she really liked the sweater that the previous version I had made of the same exact color and she really liked it. So two years ago I told her, oh, I'll make you one two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally did it. So um, I'm going up to visit her and we're going to do some scrapbooking. And so it'll be her birthday when I'm up there. So oh, nice. I will be giving this to her for her birthday. That is awesome. So, That's really yeah, sweet. Yeah, so hopefully she'll really like it. Yeah. I think she will. She liked mine. So I you should try to get will. a picture of the two of you together with her wearing that. Yes. That And then we'll post and it in our next episode. Sounds good. Yeah. And I could bring fun. mine and wear mine too. Yeah. You could be twinsies. Yeah. You kind of are anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Right. So are we on to whips? We are. And so I'm just going to start by telling you about my Cartwright. And I didn't bring it today because it's in, it's in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> there is a picture. <laughs> So it's a Cartwright by Jenny Atkinson and I knit the size 49 and I used the Cascade 220 fingering in silver and uh, charcoal, white and lemon. So I promised it was going to be done for our next broadcast but it just, the sleeves just, there's something wrong with the way the sleeves are, they're not going into the 
the shoulder correctly. Yeah. And so you'll see in the picture when I did actually <laughs> put it in there, they're all puckered. It's all puckered around it's here. It's too much fabric, yeah. There was way too much fabric. <laughs> and so I put it on, pulled the sleeve up, and then Tammy like tacked it in. And so I, it just really kind of took the wind out of my sails a bit. And so I've decided to put it in timeout. Yeah. And I will pull it out and try again because it's just, I mean, it's so close. I, yeah. I, you know, I hate to not finish it, but mm -hmm. it was, it's kind of upsetting. When that yeah. Kind of thing I gave happens. her a square of the dressmaker's chalk so that she can mark around the edges of where it's pinned in before she unpins it. Um, but I didn't want to do that and have that go away because, you know, it's, mm -hmm. It's wool, so wool is hair, and if you put chalk on your hair, it's going to you know, go on, away okay. really quick. Right. So she'll need to do that and then work with it pretty quickly, yeah. I think, or yeah. do that and then maybe even, well, that's about all you can do. Yeah. You're almost going to need to do that and see if you can transfer that onto a piece of paper. Well, what I'm going to do is when I figure out the right distribution, then I'm just going to count the... Count stitches the stitches and, and rows and, and all rows, that yeah. yeah and then i'll know how to modify it to fit and i don't know we looked at the other pictures that people had knit and they look perfect they looked fine and nobody made any comments on any of their pattern pages because when she started having these woes i actually stopped what i was doing went out there and read everybody's comments to see if it was buried in there but i think maybe the problem is you knit a 49 and the other people may have fit knit it with the appropriate like with the ease that you normally would not like because that's several inches of ease for you mm -hmm. you know because the shoulders don't come here they, they come, come down, down yeah on both shoulders but it looked like that came down on both on the pictures too so on her yes. yeah i don't know i mean it just yeah. Anyway, there's something really funky about the way she shaped those in the first place. And then we tried to figure out how to make it more rounded because it was very like she had you like casting square, off. Yeah. It was like just kind of serious, like square. stair steps that were you couldn't ease those stair steps in. I don't know what the heck she it was like binding off six stitches per row or something on each end. It was three, three, six, and then you're then yeah. and the rest. Yeah, and it was so, just. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe next time I'll get the I'll get the energy to pull it out because it, it really it does really take something out of you because you put so much effort into it and oh, yeah. then and then to come up with this little glitch that's just like so frustrating right right and upsetting and i think you need somebody who's a knitter and a seamstress to be able to help with that you know because i i am not a seamstress and but i know how i've done set and sleeve right. before and i know how they're supposed to be oh, shaped you know wonder if i took a pattern of a set and sleeve like one that you've done and then mimic maybe that's a good place to start i don't know Anyhow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I'm not even sure, but that's just a So it's a, a dilemma bummer. for yeah. all of us. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, a quandary. Of... Well, I came up with a couple ideas. Things good, but... <laughs> glue. 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 Let's glow it in. Let's get the, set. Let's get the sewing machine out. <laughs> I'm like, I'll loan her my sewing machine, but I'm not doing I'm it. I'm not doing it either. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. So what, um, how many whips do you have? I have two. Um, I have four. Okay, go ahead. I'll do one, and then Because I we'll have do two our... more, and then you have two. Okay, okay so I talked good. about... Um, Beth McDonald Stone, and I'm doing another test knit for her, which this one is so cute too. This is called the Mid Ocean Tea. And here's 
where it is so far. Wow. So that's is pretty. that not so cute? So mm -hmm. I am, I don't know what, six inches below the um, sleeve opening. I tried it on and the, op the sleeve opening is a little wide. Um, so it's a little deeper than what I normally do, but this is 100% linen. So let me tell you about the, um, the yarn. I don't know, for you longtime viewers, you might remember when I bought the Silk City Fibers linen. It's 100% linen on cones in the denim colorway. So I bought this quite some time ago and like maybe a couple of years, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was pre-COVID. And, oh, maybe, okay, so that's like four years. I think. Um, but I'm holding it double and what I kind of wanted to do was do the sleeves just to see how long I wanted the body to be because sometimes the sleeves make a difference if you do those first. And I didn't because I don't want to break the yarn because it's linen and you have to deal with those ends. So I'm really mm -hmm. hoping that I've got one end at the top and one at the very bottom once I bind off. And That'll then, be nice. <laughs> yeah, and then only one under each arm and one at the bind off of the cuff. So I decided just to keep the sleeves on hold. And we talked about barber cords before. And for anybody who doesn't know what they are, it's these rubber flexible tubes. And I just put a stitch marker, not a stitch marker. It's a needle keeper on the end. It's one of these little pinchy kind. I got these on Amazon. You just squeeze them and it'll fit up to a size seven needle. So these are in the sewing section on Amazon and they just slide right over top of the barber cords. But nice. this again is the mid ocean tee. I'm knitting the size 42. I have perfect gauge. And so it's gonna have some ease and I think it'll be a wonderful summer top I'm a little concerned about the opening and this beautiful pattern, but I'm gonna have plenty of the linen left and if I need to, I can do kind of a semi-open gauge, just like a tank mm -hmm. to wear underneath of it. Um, or if you have a flesh tone. Yeah, maybe a flesh tone cami. Yeah, mm -hmm. something in cotton or linen that won't be warm. I don't want to wear a nylon cami or mm -hmm. polyester cami or something underneath of it because it would defeat the whole purpose of doing mm -hmm. linen. But um, that is supposed to come out mid-April. So I've got two more weeks to finish it. And I figure probably a couple of good days of knitting time on that and I will be done. So I'll have Beautiful. it done in plenty of time, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have some finished pictures for you. <laughs> uh, lovely. Yeah, so exciting too. All right, so why don't you go okay. with one of these beauties? Okay, so the next one is the Voyager by Isabel Kramer. Forager, I should say. And I am knitting the size four, and the yarn I'm using is the Rowan Felted Tweed in the colorway Barbara, or Barbera, I'm not really sure, but, and that was colorway number 200, that's why it's, so I have the body finished, <laughs> get my yarn out of the way, and that's oh the front. Mm -hmm. And I've got one sleeve going, and it has this beautiful detail on the sides, coming down the side. It's on the sleeve, down the front, and the back. And it's a super easy, it's not even knitted. It's just, it's just, or uh, not cabled. It's a, um, what you call a false cable or something like that. But then along the bottom, this is really kind of, it's a really neat feature. It's like the, one of those braids. Oh, like a Latvian sort braid. Sort of like a Latvian braid. And then, and then you do your um, ribbing below that. That's yeah. beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah, I'm really liking it. I was a little concerned because it was a little snug. 
So I, I had to, uh, I blocked it and it's perfect now. Oh, good. The sleeve is a little bit snug, but nothing that, um, no reason to go backwards. <laughs> no. I guess I wish I would have hit, I've gone up a needle size for the sleeve, but it's fine. It, it's not super tight. It's just fitted. Mm -hmm. It's fitted on my sleeve on my arms so and then when I get down to near I think it's like two and a half inches before your where you want your sleeved and then you add another oh Latin, Latin another braid yeah, yeah right there and then so one more sleeve to go and I don't I'm thinking I don't want to do a big ribbed because it already comes up pretty high and I'm either gonna do I've Maybe actually an I cord I thought about an I cord but then I'm also thinking about just doing this around the top I wonder how the braid side of the braid would be if it, it would be a nice finished edge well that's a good question yeah I don't know but you could pick up stitches and do that and then do like a two stitch I cord or something yeah. if it's not while well, it it's still on your right. needles. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Because I don't know how you'd bind off that Latvian braid. You'd yeah, start... I'm not, well, they're all pearl stitches, so you would do it pearl wise, right? Yeah, you might have to do like one extra row. I could do an extra row, to, yeah. Because I don't know what this. Yeah. It will, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to just play with it. That'll I'll be... have to play with it. It'll be fun. Yeah. So. Experiment. And I love this yarn. And I love the speckles. I don't know if I if I showed you, got close enough where you could even see that. But it's got beautiful blue and white speckles. And. Yeah. So I'm excited. So you should pretty. be excited. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff right there. Yeah. <laughs> the time of year right now where you can wear that. I know, yeah. right? Right, yes. so that's DK weight? Yes, yes. I know some of our viewers have asked us to tell what the weight of the yarn is oh, we're talking about, and right. I keep forgetting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's DK. Yeah, that's... Mm. Good point. Okay, so we'll try. It's and all in our show notes, though, <laughs> right? No, not I mean the, well, yarn, the you, yarn detail are, but we can only put so many words in the show notes. But when you click on the link, it'll oh yeah take you to the pattern page, which will show what show the weight the show is. Notes. Yep. Yes, yep. It'll, yes, it'll it'll so. not show notes. It'll take you yeah to the designer's info. Right, yeah. right, good. Okay, do you want to go or do you want? Why sure. not you go? So, you still have three, right? I do. The first... I, I do, but that's okay. Go ahead and show okay. one and then I'll... Okay, the first thing I have is the Autumn Alpine by Caitlin Hunter. And I saw this pattern come out and I was like, oh, I really want to make it. So, I started it, so I haven't got very far. Okay, I've got yarn and all the things um, stuck. But anyway, here's what it looks like so far. So this is the collar, and I got that completed. And as I was reading the pattern, it said, use your ribbing needle to do the collar. Well, I'd use my main needle. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a size three because of the gauge to, for me to get gauge. It was a US four um, needle, and so I needed to use a size three. But I really needed to go down to size two to get to get gauge. Okay, anyway. you could just confused me. Yeah, you needed a size three, but you had to go down to a two. Okay, so. My main needle is a size US 3. My ribbing needle was supposed to be a US size 2. Oh, okay. okay. So it. I didn't use my ribbing needle when I made my little collar. I when used you're the, to be the main needle. Number 2. Oh, gotcha. Got it. Okay. So, um, anyway, so I'm going to show you what yarns I'm using. So the first one is the Knit Picks, and this is called Paragon. And it's a sport weight. 
So this is a sport weight sweater. And then I'm holding this Expression Fiber Arts. And this is the pearlescent fingering. And the colorway of this is Amazonite. And holding this with the um, Juniper Moon Farms Finley in colorway fresco. And Finley so, is silk. Oh, it's a silk, silk lace weight, yeah. silk and some merino. So holding these together makes the sport. And that'll be all the color work. So anyway, I tried this on because I wanted to see if really I did, do I really need to use a smaller, you know, smaller needle to do the neckline or did it seem to be fine? And it seems to be fine, but I did not like the color on me. It just kind of made my skin look washed out. So my thoughts are I'm going to rip this out and I'm going to start over using some different yarns that I think will be work better with my skin tone. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't 100% happy and I really want this to be something that I will wear. So more to come on yeah. that. Yeah. So before we go any further, <clears throat> we found an app when we were in Jamaica. And the map is called Dressica. And let me see if I can. All right. So down in, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. Oh, I'm not. You know what I'll do? I'll take a screenshot and then zoom in on it. But it's D-R-E-S-S-I-K-A. And what you do is take a picture of yourself. Yeah, and tell it what your natural hair color is and your eye color and it analyzes you. So, We've been talking about this for months, <laughs> yeah. about is this my color or is this not my color? Well, anyway, I am a deep autumn. We figured it out. And you are a... Bright spring. And you are a... I think I'm a, oh gosh, bright summer, I think. Because I took it my picture, but I need to go take retake my picture in the right light and all that other stuff. And so... I'm kind of, and, and then I look at the colors that it told me and I go, that doesn't seem right for me. So, so anyway, I'm not 100% sure yet because I always thought I was a spring. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> but knowing that, so this app, what you can do is take pictures of your yarn and zoom in and it's got this wardrobe selection and when you click on that, it's got your face and an outline of what a shirt would be. Uh -huh. And when you put the picture in there of the yarn, you can expand it to fill up that shirt, that shirt shape. And it analyzes the color of your yarn and tells you what percentage it is of your best colors. That's it's cool. the coolest thing ever. I wish, what I'll do is, um, I'll do a screenshot of one of those. Uh -huh. Put that in here but it's really cool that we now know what our colors are mostly we'll get you outside today and yeah. take a picture like right out here in the yeah. natural I'm, light i'm pretty sure i know most of my colors but <laughs> i won't yeah. have to do that right i mean it's a free app yeah I, right. it you can pay for the app and you get more features but i paid for it on my phone and then but i use it mostly on my ipad and i can still do most of the things with it so Anyway, I hope if you're wondering, <laughs> you can get the app for free and give it a go. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I have a secret test knit that I'm doing for uh, Thea Coleman of Baby Cocktails. 
and I have to tell you that I am so excited about it coming out. I am using uh, Cascade 220 in the silver colorway. It is a fabulous merino yarn. Is it worsted? Yeah. Ooh. And um, I can tell you that there are cables and I can show you this and I'm so excited. <laughs> and you should be excited too. So it's, <laughs> it's secret and that's all I can show you, but I just wanted you to know that I am working away on something. <laughs> wow, I am anxious to know what this is. Yeah. yeah well, right. I can wow. show you guys because, but We're it just, tell she anyone. doesn't want it to be shown on social media just yet. Uh -huh. um, and really, me. honestly, it's it's really it's her baby and she gets to show it to the world when she's as, ready yeah. and it i gotta tell you it's as gorgeous as all of her other patterns are so keep an eye out for that that's going to be mid-april so probably that's only two weeks away yeah so by the next time we podcast i will have it done and i'll be able to actually show you my version of it and it's it's gorgeous i'm excited so cool. so you should go, I guess. Is that right? Or is it my okay. turn? Yeah, I think it's you your both, turn, You Claudia. each have one, right? Right. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll just you. go ahead and go. So the next thing I'm working on is the Anjou by Skaney, Skaney Dipping. <laughs> <laughs> what? Skaney Dipping. <laughs> like skinny dipping only. Yes. Skinny, skinny dipping. <laughs> That's too cute. It is pretty funny. So I'll show you this and then I'll tell you more about the yarn. But one of the, the light green is also the um Knit Picks Paragon. You got you got stuff oh, all. I know, right? It's all there you go. Well, oh, it's all tangled. There you go. There think, you go. Now it's I better. think we got it now, but Let's see, which is the front? No, this is the back. Yeah, that's the back. So, here it is. And it's all slip stitches. And they call it a basket weave. And I think it's kind of cool. Beautiful. And the second <laughs> yarn I'm using is called by Utopia. It's a Helix DK in the colorway Earth. So it's it's color changing. So I think it's going to be really, really pretty. And the pattern actually called for a worsted. And but I like these colors together. And so so what's the other color you're using? I don't think you showed. The oh, green. topiary. Oh, oh, sorry. I don't like green you is. That one. Uh, yeah is the topiary and it is a very hmm, limey maybe but yeah with a little hint of an olive undertone yeah, yeah. to it or maybe it's lime on a light gray base or something because it's got some depth to it it's yeah and it's so pretty I really so love pretty. it. Oh. So you and just did the math because you did a sport, sport. It's yeah with or it's a, a worsted is a pattern with a sport, sport weight and DK. But I did my my a swatch, and I love the way it looked, and I uh -huh. like the fabric that I got, and so I said, okay, well, let's see. It's re the eighteen is the gauge from the pattern, and I had twenty. So I went up a size to like a 50 because I wanted to get, and doing the math, that came out to about a 46. Mm -hmm. So I think, think it's going to be perfect. It's beautiful. And the only thing is I tried it on the other day and the sleeves are really deep. And I think that's because it's a, the pattern's for a 50, which kind of makes sense that well, your row gauge might be off. Yeah, probably. probably. Well, for a 50, it was going to be long anyway. But um, 
that's okay. I might end up doing some short rows down below or just do it the way it is. We'll see. Here's another one where I have to do the sleeves. <laughs> but the sleeves, you pick up stitches and then you right. knit them on. Knit them down. Oh, okay. On and, and down. So, yeah. So that'll make more sense. So. Yeah, that will make... Oh, that's so beautiful. It is. Yeah. Thank and that you. was the one that you saw the designer wearing it at Rhine at Rhinebeck. But hers was just one color. And but I liked the the texture that was going on. And mm -hmm. I said something to her and I said, Oh, I really like your sweater. And she goes, Oh, thanks. It's my design. And the uh, fellow that she was with said, Oh, and it's gonna be in the pom pom, -pom magazine. So I had to buy the pom-pom magazine, and it is in there. So it's gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. I saw a two-color blue version, I think, is the way they show it, isn't it? Like a There's a two light different and ones they showed. There's yeah, two-color blue. One was a two-color green yeah. also. So but Man. Yeah. That is just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You'll have that done in no time just because it's so fun to know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've been spending all my time on the other one, so... <laughs> on my, my uh, forager, so every now and then I pick this up for something different, so. Wow. Yeah. So nice. Thank you. All well, right. You might as well get your Barbara or Barbie sweater done. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barbie's still a hot commodity. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's not why I did it, though. <laughs> um, let's see what else I have here. I have... Oh, the pressed flowers shawl. No, not no. shawl. Pullover by Amy <laughs> Christoffers. Oh. And, oh my goodness, I am so in love. All right, I have my tags for my yarn down here, I guess. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Me too. Check it out. Oh, on the camera, that darker color at the bottom really, really, really stands out. Like yes, it does. Big drastic. But in real life, it's not as drastic. This ah. is so good. Isn't that funny, the way the camera yeah. picks that up? So it goes from the super peachy pink and it's a lot darker than it shows on camera just to these other colors and it's fading so the yarn i'm using on that is um, bare naked wools better breakfast dk in the americano colorway and that's some yarn you got from the and Rhinebeck yeah, so that year. was Rhinebeck yarn. And then the color changing yarn is, no, 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 no. This is Feederbrook Farms Plumage Worsted, and it's their mill ends. And this is not coming up on camera as beautiful as it is. Maybe it is now, but it keeps changing into these amazing colors. So it says that I need 558 yards for my size of this. And this was mill ends and I had to break it. It's 100% wool, so it's not super wash. And, um, you know, it's got that twist. If you can see that up close, these colors there, it's like two colors twisted together. Um, Sometimes on the mill ends where it's twisted, you've got a lot of fluff coming out. It didn't quite twist. I was able to, on most of those, pull some of the excess fluff out, get a little bit wet and spit splice it and it knit in and you cannot tell even a little bit. But there were a couple of places where it was very gnarly and I had to break it and spit splice it together. So I'm concerned that I may not have enough and so I have another skein of Feederbrook uh, Farm? No, no, is not Feederbrook. Yarn Hero. Oh, right. Yarn Hero. And this is coming across like Easter egg colors, but it's not. But you can see that the colors, I, I really could. They sort of morph 
into one another. Uh -huh. The center of this is clearly as bright as some of this. Yes. Uh -huh. So if I need more, I will have more. Um, because, you know, I only got one skein. This was one of those great big colossal 150 gram skeins that was um, all wrapped together. Oh, this just happens to be a spot of that gnarly bit that I may or may not be able to fix. Um, but you know, it was Millen's and it was so super cheap to buy it that way. Mm -hmm. They also, just so you know, have the Millen's on their website. They so do. You can buy oh, them wow. there. Yeah, so okay. all three of us ended up with with that this yarn yeah with the same colors. yarn different colors, and yeah. different colors and you know looking at tammy's pressed flowers of course we all want to make that oh my gosh isn't that just and so cute it's such yeah, a it's gorgeous but i've got two testaments that i'm working on right now that are due the middle of april and so i had to make myself lay this down but this is what i knit on when we were in aruba um last week and it smells Wow, it smells Ocean? like sunscreen. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh. It does. I can smell my sunscreen in it. It smells a little bit like a sweaty sheep, too, because of the heat. <laughs> so are you going to have some gorgeous pictures at the end of our podcast today, of your trip? I'm going to have some, yes. I will put some in, yeah. Cause, um, so we went to Aruba with two other couples and had the most amazing time staying at the Marriott um, Stellaris, which it's just, it's a great place to hang out. So it's one of our favorite, it's definitely a favorite island to go to. Um, really, really a lot of fun. Always 85 to 87 degrees, sunshiny and windy. I mean, you just can't go, you can't beat that, right? You, right. you can't go wrong you with cannot. that kind of weather. You don't get hot, even though it's that right. warm out. Yeah. It's so, a dry hot. Do you have something else? <laughs> I can't do remember. I have one do more do? whip. Do you I'll have show. another whip? No. Okay. Okay, so my next whip is the Lighthouse Cardigan by Brandy Cheyenne Harper. And this is a whip that I've had lingering for a long time. And so I'm picking so it back up because pretty. it is springtime and it is time to wear this. So I need to start working on it. So this is as much as I've got done so far. But it is... Such that. beautiful fabric. And I think I'm showing the inside, but <clears throat> you'll be seeing it in the future. I can't even tell. So, the yarn that I'm using, I don't remember. I think this is an inside out, you knit an inside out pattern. This is the Pearl Soho Lantern hmm. yarn, which is a... 61% cotton and 39% linen and they no longer sell this yarn. It's a discontinued once again um, but this pattern is so beautiful and um, so I want to pick it back up and really get this thing done because it's going to be so pretty. The colorway on this is horse chestnut. It's beautiful. That is so gorgeous. It has so, such a weird feel it to does. it. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of rough, but I wonder when it blocks, it'll probably soften a bit. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I bet it turns into luxury. It's going to be this beautiful, oh just goodness. something nice to, a little cardigan to slip over and yeah. so warm are these, you up on cool nights. This little ribbed feature, is that on the side? Uh, yes. Oh, That's nice. really pretty. So both of the sides have that. That's really pretty. And, um, yeah, I think it's worn actually inside out. And that, that may have been what I've showed you, which has this beautiful detail. So, really get cool. busy on this. And, and this is a kinda, worsted weight. It is? This is actually worsted. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have guessed that. I would not either. Yeah, well, I'm using a size 7 needle. I wish you could feel um, what this feels like. It is so... Different. Cool and mm -hmm. coarse. It's a yarn that was made in Japan. 
Yeah, I can't even describe. If somebody put that in my hand and said, what are you holding? I would have no idea how to describe it. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe it's not worse. Than, maybe it's more of a DK. 18 to 20 stitches. Is that, well, that would that be, could, that could would be that worsted. be a worsted? Because yeah. yeah. 16 sure it's is worsted. bulky, right? Yeah. I oh, mean, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so I think that I am pretty sure it's worsted weight. It's beautiful. That color oh, is so it is. good. Yes. Yeah. It is, it's so pretty. And, you know, I need, I'm starting to work on this again. So, yeah, good gonna job. Gonna get it done this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you said no for uh, any no more. Okay. more. All right, I have one more, and I'm really excited now that I've seen Janet's finished. I'm working on the Robinia by Ann Bunsell, and I am about four inches from binding off. So I'm trying to figure out. So here it is. And this is what Janet was talking about, that super deep armhole. I don't know if it's because neither of us got gauge on row gauge, because the pattern itself doesn't look like it's that deep. But man, I'm telling you, from my shoulder, this comes like wow. way below my bra. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. it's a couple inches from my waist, seriously. It is, but this is getting really close. I tried it on earlier today and I'm gonna finish this last repeat. So I think after the scallops, there are about 10 rows of ribbing and I'll do the next scallop and probably go right in to the ribbing when it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so the yarn I'm using on this and I just, gosh, I love this color. I'm a big navy blue fan anyway. Um, so the yarn I'm using is a combination of three different yarns. And so the blue is Lang Enya. Oh, I think that's coming across nice on the screen. I think you can see that. And it's a navy blue with a light cord in the middle of it. And I think it's called Dark Jeans on the website when, when you purchase that collar. Um, and then I have Kelborn Woolen's Scout in DK, but to get weight, ooh, to get gauge, I needed to add the Hobby um, Alpaca Lace. Yes, hobby alpaca lace to it. And that's what's making that marled kind of lightish gray. So it doesn't look as dark as what it should with this held with it, but it adds just enough to it. Um, so the scout is 100% wool, non superwash, and then the alpaca lace is 100% alpaca. So and that would be lace weight, DK weight, and then the Enya is, oh boy, this is 150 meters to 50 grams, so 300 meters, what is that, 347 yards to 100 grams, or about that, um, does it tell you what the stitch gauge is, what your, no, hmm. no uh, 17, I think. I mean, I can't. So that's really... probably a bulky. I yeah. Bet. So I yeah. know that the um, yeah, the pattern a is a bulky weight. Yeah. yeah. So I got gauge with um, this. So when we were talking about yarns to use for uh -huh. that Enya, the Lang Enya would be a good one, a good substitute oh, for yeah. that one as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about that, but I didn't want to. <laughs> at the time, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I should say that right now or not. But yeah, so anyway, this maybe will be a lot closer to done. The body will at least be done, and then I'll probably at least have the sides um, mattress stitched and ready to pick up for sleeves. So hopefully, hopefully. 
I saw on Little Knits. <laughs> uh -oh. They had the Lang Enya on sale. Do so they? if you're interested in some of that fluffy yarn, it is on sale on Little Knits. Uh oh, <laughs> I hope that doesn't mean it's going to be discontinued. Uh, they often yes. get colors that are discontinued or buy lots of, like the end of whatever the, the line is. Or something. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully, I mean, everything they have isn't discontinued. Right, Some of right, it's just regular right. yarn, but their prices are always pretty good. Yeah, yeah they, they are. are. Yeah. So that's that's pretty nice to know. Yeah. Um, so did you buy any, do you have any yarn to show this time? Did yeah, you because, because you were doing the um, pressed flour. <laughs> I said, well, I better skein up my, my um, Feederbrook farm mill ends and i have two different colorways oh wow those are pretty oh my goodness yeah yes and so this is one colorway and it doesn't have a name because they are mill ends and they you know just put stuff together that goes and then there's the second one wow. oh man so <laughs> i've been kind of trying to figure out what colors to go okay this one I was thinking with navy blue. I think that would be a nice combination. Or yes. I could do dark gray. Yeah. Whichever one, I think either one would really work. I kind of like the blue, but I like the gray too. And then with this one, I was thinking the dark gray, but then... <laughs> I could do the dark blue as well. Oh my goodness, yes, you could. So, Are I'm going to gauge swatch. Yeah, I'll have to gauge swatch, but and I'm going to run into the same problem that you were talking about. There's 520 yards and I am doing a size that requires 625. <laughs> so, it's by 50, right? 550 yards in that no, mine said 520. Did it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine did too. I think so. Oh, mine said 550. Well, maybe you just got lucky. Woo! Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, 520. I don't oh. Know. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I have some leftover Yarn Hero from other projects uh -huh. I've done. We need to pull them out and see if either one of them are a close enough match to either one, one of, of those. those. Yeah. And see because, you know, when it, when you get to the end. Right. Who knows? But we also were talking about um, Shandy from Expression Fiber Arts. We have some color changing yarn yeah. from her that may go with one or the other of those so right we'll, well pull those out too found something that looks has a similar color tone on there on the website at feederbrook farm and uh, if you have to yeah yeah <laughs> so and i don't know i might find some i think this one would be easier to come up with a color way to work yeah, this but one is less color. color that chain. one is more barber pole, uh -huh. where you've got more color variety. And this one does that on the outside, and then it changes. It almost looks like a solid uh -huh. for that section in the middle. You might have better success with that one, though. Yeah. So I may come. So I may have the same problem then. Although, look at these. <laughs> you were holding those colors up. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's really pretty. Check these out together. Uh -huh. Oh, so I like that too. I, yeah. yeah, when you were holding that up, I'm like, so these, I bought a couple of yarns from uh, Originally Lovely, and I, ha I, I don't even remember why, but I got to tell you, these are some freaking gorgeous, fluffy, bulky yarns. Fluffy bunny yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Fluffy bulky. It sounded like I was going to say a bad word, but I totally was not. So if the brand is actually originally lovely and they are coming across on the screen so accurate, I can't even believe it. The blue might be a little off, but man, that deep aubergine color is That's spot really on. Pretty. That when oh. oh my gosh. It just pops okay. with that. Is this yeah, one of your colors? Yep. You can wear that. 
Uh huh. Uh, yeah, because that reminds me of your um, metamorphic sweater where oh, you had right. that beautiful purple mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, so I'm just And I saying, know that looks good on you. But I mean, you pull pull a really deep... Um, and then I, th I had this too, I thought... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, even this color looks really good, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It's a green... A, a it's got a beautiful green teal. to it. Yeah. 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 Like a real deep teal. Mm -hmm. That would go really yeah. well also. So wowza. Yeah. So I couldn't pick I couldn't pick when I was there because I liked this. I like the stripiness and colors and then I that and then I saw this and I like that. So anyway. I have two. That one's mine. You didn't have Americano of this one. Oh you don't have better no, breakfast no, 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 anyway. No. No. You bought a different yeah. something, a different color of that. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, nice. You have anything else? Mm, Janet, did you have any dream knitting or uh, nothing else for me? So the only thing I wanted to tell you, I didn't bring everything, but I want you to know that I have been making progress on my Orbitz sweater. I ripped, I was having an issue, remember, with the single um, Holskarn Super Soft after I finished with the mm -hmm. color work. Um, I was I went ahead and kept knitting with just the super soft by itself on the same needle size and I was I got a couple inches done and didn't like it and I said screw it I'm I love this sweater too much and yes it took me a long time to knit those couple mm -hmm. inches but I ended up pulling it all out picking the stitches back up and went down a needle size and I'm now loving oh, it and I have about four inches done and hopefully next time I'll be able to show that because mm -hmm. it's changing. I think the sun might be peeking through the yeah, clouds a little bit. Yeah, right now and then it gets a little it's brighter like a, out yeah, there. Yeah, it got a wee bit brighter in here. So are we done with all the yarny goodness? Yes, I think we are. All right then, I guess we'll see you at the tasting table. Well, today's feature of wine is the Trefethen Cabernet Sauvignon. 2021 so it's a little bit of a baby but it's a very nice wine um, mm. same kind of feature that we really <laughs> like which is on the very bold side mm. little it's not highly tannic it's kind of a little in, more in the middle um, but it's a very dry on the dry side and it's a little more on the acidic that is delicious. We're so boring. Everything's the same. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's okay. You know what? So. I think next time we'll do a Sauvignon Blanc. Or maybe we'll wait till summer. <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm thinking. I have I'm thinking a, we'll wait until summer. I have a blend I'll bring next time. Because we have some. But of course it has cab in it. <laughs> but this, this is like what we love. So we yeah. love a Cabernet, which is more bold and um, tannic and, you mm. know, has that earthiness. Yeah. Um, just a, a dark, lot of berries to it. Right, the dark fruits. And chocolate and this yeah. going on. And mm -hmm. This one's not as earthy. It's just big, bold. <sighs> mm -hmm. and this Rich. is a really nice winery. Yeah, yeah, it is. They, we've they put we've been there in Napa, and mm -hmm. it's just a really, it's a family winery. It's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> family winery. And the alcohol in but, this one's 13.9, and you can almost oh. tell that it's kind of on the lower end. Yeah, because it doesn't have mm -hmm. any heat in it, because the yeah. being so young, it might have had more, if it had been a higher percentage of alcohol, we would have noticed, I think. Yeah. Right. That's delicious smells mm -hmm. too. The nose on that is mmm. So it says the average price on this is sixty-two dollars. So it's not a cheap. It's not an expensive wine by any means. Right. But, right. Yeah. Um. Really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, we all went together. District of Napa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It says yeah. We really enjoyed going there and drinking their wines. Yeah. 
Well, guys, we didn't hit 4,000. But we're getting so, really, really close. Yeah. Inching up. We are. <laughs> we are. So maybe next time, because we need like 41 more subscribers, and then we'll hit that number. So... So and yeah. that, you know what next that time means. We'll, that means we'll be doing a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so keep an eye out for the next episode. Yeah. Because that's mm. we're definitely gonna get some bags ready. I am confident we're gonna hit that number. And you know what? Even if we don't, we're gonna do it anyway because Yeah. What the heck? Spring has sprung. Spring has sprung. Spring has we'll sprung. Do spring. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. And it's time. Yeah. And it's time to give you some prizes. Yeah. <laughs> we love that sending things out yeah. into the world. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we are talking. Uh, we're definitely going back to Rhinebeck this year. We've already yes. got our Airbnb picked. And um, Melissa will be with us again. And Terry, another friend who comes to knitting all the time, is um, going to come this time. And so we're going to, in order to keep us all in one vehicle, we're pulling the trailer <laughs> <laughs> for our suitcases and our food and, and our wine everything. and our knitting. And all the, all, the knitting will be in the car, though. That's yeah. too precious to go in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to waste time. Plan. Yeah, we could be nutting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we are thinking pick up every stitch. They say they're going to have an event uh -huh. now again on Thursday. So if anybody knows of something that's going to be happening on Friday, let us know because right now is, that day's open for is us. Cake Palooza. Yeah, doing? Cake Palooza should be doing their thing. Is that and that was Friday? Last that was time, on right? Friday. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we skipped that and went to the one that was the disaster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wouldn't that be fun to go to Cake Palooza? I think we'd see different people yeah, who we probably yeah. want to see. I think that's where Robin from Yarnbird sets up. Oh, and yes. Yeah. I hear that one's going to be really great. So let us know because we, we kind of want to plan what we're going to be doing. I know it's months away, but, you know, we still like planning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If it's knitting related and fun and we get to hang out, then it's, yeah. we're all about it. Yeah. So let us know if you're aware of anything else that's going on ahead of that. That would be fun. So yeah, I guess are we done? Is I that it? I think we yeah. are. Okay. Well, right. if, if you, you can't, can't be with the wine you love, love the wine you're with. Cheers. Cheers. Yum. Scrumptious. Yes. Yeah.